Hey friends, welcome back to Acre Homestead. Welcome back to my kitchen. My name is Becky and today we are going to be making five different varieties of holiday cookies. I want to go over what cookies we're going to make and we're just going to dive right in. All these recipes can be found at scratchpantry.com which will be linked down in the description box. And the first cookie we are going to be making is a chewy ginger molasses cookie. The reason we're going to start with that cookie is it needs to chill for at least two hours before we bake it. So because we're going to be making five different cookies that shouldn't be a problem if we get going with this one first next few cookies we're going to do, I'm not going to say in any particular order. I might switch it up, but I'm just going to list off the cookies and then as we get to them, I'll decide which ones we're going to cook. We're going to do the snowball cookies. Some people call them Russian tea cakes. They're rolled up in powdered sugar. They're one of my favorites. My absolute favorite cookie is this next one we're going to be doing and it's a thumbprint cookie. I haven't probably made these in 15 years. These were my go-to cookie as a child, <laughs> which is kind of funny because they're rolled in walnuts and then you put your thumbprint in it and you fill it with jam. I think because these are holiday cookies, I'm going to fill it with cranberry sauce, like cranberry preserve, but I might change that up because I have a ton of different jams canned up in the pantry. I could do a few different varieties as well, but I just thought cranberry sounded a little bit more holiday. The next we're going to do saltine toffee cookies or saltine, some people call it Christmas crack. This stuff is so good. The first time I had this, I was probably like six or seven. I was in my Girl Scouts and we did like a, we did one of those bake and share one of my friends made this, I still know exactly who made it, and I absolutely love it. And I think I've only ever made it one other time since then, but I've had it at other people's holidays. And it is so, so good. So we're going to make that, and that one's pretty easy. And then the easiest thing we're going to be making today are the Palmiers. They're a French cookie. But this one, I am not going to make the puff pastry from scratch. I've made these with scratch puff pastry. Today, I'm also going to be making up a bunch of different holiday candies as well, but that's going to be in its own separate video. We're going to do the cookies first, and then I'm going to do the candy. Before I get started on any sort of large baking or cooking day, there's two rules that I like to have. I like to have an empty dishwasher, and I also like to empty my garbage can and put it out here so that I can just put garbage directly into it. Makes it a lot easier. I'm not fighting the garbage can. I also like to make sure my headphones are charged and my cell phone is charged because as you guys know, I always have headphones in. I'm always listening to something. If you want to know what I'm listening to during this big baking day, I will link it down in the description box. And today, because I'm doing so many cookies and after this, I'm going to be doing a bunch of candies. I don't want to forget anything. So I went ahead and I did tape up my recipes up there so I would remember everything we're making today. Another thing I did is I did, because I'm doubling the recipe, last time I tried to bake with you and double recipes, I messed up on both of the cookies. So I went ahead and I wrote on each one of these the double recipe batch, so I don't have to do any math in my head as we're doing today's baking. If I have to do a big grocery haul before a cooking day or a baking day like this, which I had to do because I didn't have peanuts, I didn't have sweetened condensed milk, I didn't have saltines, I needed a lot of butter, I needed a lot of powdered sugar, instead of putting it away and then getting it back out, I just have it right here. I didn't put it away last night. Just makes my life a lot easier coming in today's baking day. So I'm pretty excited. This is going to be fun. I haven't done one of these big baking days in a long time because I haven't had time. So let's just get right into it. We're going to start with the ginger cookies because like I said, those need to chill. And I got everything out that we need right here. To make sure I'm fueled and ready to go, I have a cup of coffee here. This is actually the second cup I made today because the first one I spilled all over the floor. And I'm going to open a bottle of carbonated water so we can stay caffeinated and hydrated. Hair's back, aprons on, dogs are away because we're going to be giving these as gifts. Let's get started. In my stand mixer, you might see that there is already some things in this mixer. That's because I had to make up a fresh batch of brown sugar today. I make all my own brown sugar. I do have a video on it. My garbage can's right here so I can put the butter wrappers right in the garbage can. You don't really need a video to know how to make brown sugar. For every one cup of sugar you put in a stand mixer, put a teaspoon or so of molasses. Mix that up and you have homemade brown sugar. It tastes so much better. It's way fresher. It doesn't get solid as a rock on you and you will never buy brown sugar again. This is three cups of butter going in here. I am doubling this recipe. We are going to make a ton of ginger cookies. I'm going to get this mixing a little bit to tenderize the butter. The butter was on my counter all night, but my house, but my house is a little bit cold. I'm adding two cups of white sugar and two cups of packed brown sugar. This is the homemade brown sugar I just made. I don't know if all of this is actually going to fit in this mixer. <laughs> I've never doubled this recipe before. One trick if you're measuring molasses or honey, take your spray oil, spray your measuring scoop before you put the molasses or honey in it and it'll come right out.
Do you see how the majority of that came just right out? All right, well, this is starting off with a bang. I think one of my eggs was bad. I cracked it and I could smell it, which I've never, ever, ever had that happen before. So I'm dumping all of this. It didn't smell like a rotten egg, but it didn't smell like nothing. You know, you crack an egg and it doesn't smell like anything. And a lot of people say when you're using fresh eggs, you need to crack it into a separate bowl and test it. Well, I've never done that before because I've never had any issue. And I can't serve this to people because I'm not 100% sure that this is a safe egg. So this is getting tossed. Darn it, that's a lot of ingredients to go down the garbage can. I have learned my lesson from now on. I will crack my eggs into a separate container. Darn it. Okay, it's okay. You know what, it's worth throwing a little bit of stuff away in order to make sure everything is safe and we are just gonna wash all this up. We will be right back. All right, it's all clean, all sanitized. We're gonna do this again and we're gonna do it right this time. Have you ever heard the saying, a stitch in time saves nine? Well, I heard that when I was a kid and it does stick with me because sometimes I do tend to like to skip steps like that. Like, oh, I don't need to crack the fresh egg in another bowl. Well, would have saved me time and a lot of ingredients if I did. Let's do this again. We are back where we started. So let's crack this egg into a separate bowl. These are very fresh eggs. I just got them yesterday. Smells good. These smell like absolutely nothing. That egg had to have been bad because I've never had an egg, a raw egg smell before. It didn't smell bad, but it didn't smell like nothing. That was all-purpose flour. I still have two more cups of all-purpose flour I need to put in there, but I don't think it's all gonna fit if I put it in all at one more time. I'm gonna mix in the spices now. This is ginger, this is clove, and cinnamon. I'm pushing this mixer to the max. forgot baking soda and salt that would have been really bad so I'm gonna mix the baking soda into those two cups of flour I'm gonna kind of stir that in just a little bit and I'm gonna do the same thing with my salt you guys know I love my Redmond real salt that's what this is I'm gonna mix that in to that flour. Now we're gonna mix this together. All right, let's see how this does. Ah! All right, I think, I think we're gonna be able to do it, just barely. Now we need to take this dough and it has to chill for at least two hours. So I'm gonna transfer it so we can make the next batter. I'm gonna cover this and it's gonna go in the fridge for at least two hours. I'm gonna tidy this up and then we are gonna move on to the next, let's do the snowballs. But we have to prep the nuts for snowballs. So we're gonna prep the nuts for the snowballs and the thumbprints at the same time. So we can kind of kill two birds with one stone. But let me kind of get this mess tidied up a little bit. I just looked up the measurements and we need three cups of walnuts for the thumbprint cookies and we need one and a half cups of walnuts for the snowballs. So I'm gonna go ahead and get all of those walnuts chopped up right now. Trying to be as efficient as possible. 
I did do a cheat and I bought pre-chopped walnuts, so I'm not going to have to chop these quite as much. For the thumbprint cookies, it is best if you have a really fine chop on your walnuts because you're going to roll the cookies in them and for them to stick on, they stick better if they're really finely chopped. This took me a little bit longer than I was anticipating, but I think we're finally there. So we need one and a half cups for the snowball cookies, so we're gonna call that one and a half cups. Let's go make the snowball cookies. I'm putting in two cups of butter and I already put in two teaspoons of homemade vanilla. I'm not doubling this recipe. And I'm gonna cream in one cup of powdered sugar. I love these cookies. These are one of my favorite cookies too. I like to say I kind of have grandma taste, even as a kid. Any cookie with nuts, any ice cream with nuts was my favorite, which was not always popular with my friends growing up. And it's actually not even popular with my husband. He does not prefer nuts at all. So I don't usually get to make banana bread or anything with walnuts, which is really sad. <laughs> I'm gonna add in my salt. Anytime you're cooking, whether it is Baking or cooking, do not forget to season. That is so important, especially sweets, because you need to balance that flavor. Now we're gonna add our flour. I do all my baking with salted butter. I know that's not a popular opinion, but that's what I do. We're adding four and a half cups of flour. This is a pretty dry dough. That's why you want to use really finely chopped walnuts. So I went through and I kind of took the walnuts at the bottom from the cutting board. That is done. All right, let's go shape these. I knew I was doing this big cooking day and I just bought myself full size sheet pans. I got four of them. I preheated my oven to 400 degrees. This is going to make baking so much easier because I'm going to be able to put probably twice as many cookies on this one sheet. And I pre-cut parchment paper. I pre-cut, I don't know, maybe 10 of them so that I could just go ahead and put parchment paper on each one of my sheets. I also finally went out and bought myself a cookie scoop. I have wanted one of these for a long time, but I didn't want to spend the money. And it was time. This I knew it was going to take me a lot of time to do this big baking day. And if a simple cookie scoop could make the day go by a little bit faster and smoother, I was gonna do that. I thought it was worth it to go purchase it for myself. And they're gonna have a lot of uses. I'll be able to make meatballs out of them. I'll be able to scoop muffins with them. And I think they're just gonna make my life a lot easier. Worth the 12 bucks. I am making these a little bit fuller than the scoop by just a little bit. I'm just gonna get a lot of them out here. First sheet going into the oven. So it'll be eight to 10 minutes at 400 degrees. I am the worst about setting a timer. I'm committed to setting a timer for every single one of these recipes today. We'll see how well that goes. Hey Siri, set a timer for eight minutes. That's my lower oven telling me it's ready. So as soon as these are rolled, we're gonna stick these ones in the lower oven. I'm only gonna bake one cookie sheet in the oven at a time because you get a more evenly cooked cookie that way. The last dough that we need to make is the thumbprint cookie dough. And there is one step that's a little bit different than your typical cookies, is you only use the egg yolk in the dough. The egg white is what you roll the cookie in so that the walnuts will stick to it. So we gotta get the eggs separated. That's the timer, I gotta stop this. Those cookies are not quite done. I'm looking for a little bit of browning and browning on the bottom, which we're not quite there yet. I want a little bit more browning than that. Ooh. While I'm waiting for those cookies, because they only have about a minute or two left, I'm gonna put my two cups of butter in here for the saltine toffee. I'm not gonna start melting this or anything until we're ready to actually do it, but I just wanna be as time as efficient as possible. 
So this is two cups of butter going in here. And I'm gonna put two cups of brown sugar in here. I'm not gonna turn this on, like I said, until we're ready to actually make this. I think they're done now, because when I pick them up and I look at the bottom, they're slightly browned, and they're starting to get a little bit of color on the outside. This took about 14 minutes, so my oven definitely took a little bit longer. This is the first time I've cooked these cookies in my oven. While I was waiting for those cookies and I'm waiting for the bottom ones, I put two cups of butter into my mixer, and now we're gonna add one cup of packed brown sugar to the mixer. Second big blender of the day. My bottom oven is way hotter than my top oven. I didn't know that. These were in the oven less time and the bottoms kind of burnt. So these will be cookies we'll eat. I won't send these off to people. <laughs> Performing surgery on these cookies. I tasted one and they don't taste super, super burnt. So if I just take the little bit of that too dark part off, I think they're gonna be just fine. Cause I cut this, I tasted it. Tastes great. Tastes really good actually. This was probably the perfect cookie to mess up on because they are covered in powdered sugar. I'm gonna go into my walk-in pantry and fill up my container of flour because I just ran out. This might be an unpopular opinion, but I really don't like the feel of dry flour. Gives me the heebie-jeebies. Five cups of flour. This mix has flour, brown sugar, egg yolks, vanilla, all-purpose flour, and salt. That's it, it's a really simple dough. And that's the dough, really simple, really easy. Now for the fun part, filling it. But now I have them all rolled out. What you do is you take them and you roll them in the egg whites and then you plop them in here. And I like to have one hand that stays kind of wet with the egg white mixture and the other hand that stays dry. It just makes it a little bit easier. And I'll usually plop a few in here. This is why it helps if you really finely chop your walnuts so that they really stick well. And then I usually push them in like that. And that's it. So you make my favorite cookie. I cannot believe I'm making these. I haven't made these in years, years. These do not really change shape at all. There's no baking powder or anything in them, no baking soda. So you can really put them close together, but they will flatten when you put the thumbprint in them. I went ahead and I grabbed the cranberry sauce that we're gonna fill these with. You can fill these with any jam or jelly that you want. Set those aside. I'm gonna go wash my hands and we'll move on to the next step. I've never done it with cranberry sauce, but I think this will be good. Sometimes they crack a little bit when you do the print, so I just push it back together.
I think the cranberry sauce was a good choice here. It smells like Christmas. They didn't get as bubbly. When I do regular jam, the inside gets really, really bubbly. But I think that's because there's more sugar in regular jam. Well, I don't know, actually. There's a lot of sugar in cranberry sauce. But it smells, look, between the walnuts and the cranberry, it smells like Christmas. I think we're ready. I'm gonna pull these. Yeah, these are done. Yeah, perfect. We have officially finished two cookies now. These ginger snaps are done. When I take cookies like this out of the oven, I like to smack them on the counter a couple times. Oh, I'm gonna let them cool on the cookie sheet for just a minute or two, and then I'm gonna put them on the cooling rack. And I'm gonna repeat this multiple times. That is a lot of cookies. We are gonna be making, these are a lot smaller than I normally make them, but I think they're good for Christmas cookies to give away. We've done three sheet pans of the ginger cookies and I have two more in the oven. I still had probably enough to do one or two more sheet pans. I went ahead and rolled those up and I'm gonna put those in the freezer for us later because I think I made plenty of ginger snaps. Now we're gonna move on to the palmiers. This isn't very much of a recipe per se. This is more of a, just a technique or assembling. I have just plain white sugar here. We're gonna add a little bit of cinnamon and I'm gonna do cinnamon sugar palmiers. You don't have to do cinnamon sugar, you could just do plain sugar, but I thought I would make it a little bit more festive. Then I'm gonna add a little bit of salt to the sugar just to help balance it. I do need to remember that I have two sheets of cookies in the oven, as not to forget. I'm just gonna eyeball this. This is still a little bit frozen. I think I'm gonna to have to have this come up a little bit more to room temperature. It's still a little too frozen to work with. While I was waiting for the puff pastry to thaw a little bit, I went ahead and got a fold out table and I put a tablecloth on it and then I lined it with parchment paper because I'm running out of counter space for the, all the cookies. And as soon as we're done cooking the palmiers, I am then gonna be doing a bunch of candy. So I needed counter space. So let me show you what I did here. We have the ginger snaps, the thumbprints, and the snowballs. I think I made these thumbprints a little too big as Christmas gifts, but that's okay. I think they'll still taste really good. The size won't affect the flavor of the thumbprint cookies at all. They'll taste fantastic, but you know, if people want to try more than one cookie and not get a sugar overload, it probably would have been better to make them a little bit smaller. What I'm doing is I'm taking my sugar, salt, cinnamon mixture, and I'm putting it on my cutting board. My puff pastry is thawed. There's no exact measurements on this at all. I mean, there are on the recipe, but it doesn't have to be exact. I have one sheet of pastry here. I'm gonna put more sugar on the top. I'm gonna roll the sugar in. I'm 
And what you do is you roll it in half. This is the one I kind of broke a little bit, so it's gonna be a little bit trickier because they are separated right there. Yeah, we're gonna have some issues with this one because I broke it. That's okay, we'll figure it out. <laughs> so this one is gonna turn out a little silly looking probably, especially on this end. But yeah, it's not even gonna hold together, but that's okay. We'll still bake it. So I'm gonna put this back in the refrigerator for a while to completely cool again before we cut it. This is perfectly good cinnamon sugar, so I'm gonna save it for just something else. We have the last thing in the oven, the Palmiers. Those are gonna take about 10 minutes to cook. My dad just showed up and he's, my mom went to Goodwill yesterday and got a bunch of candy jars, so he's delivering them. So I'm gonna package up a little package of goodies for him. I think he, I think my mom also made me fire starters, which I'm pretty excited about. So let's go see what haul we got. Okay. Those are fire starters? Yeah. Oh wow, perfect. These are amazing. Oh! Okay. All right. Uh oh. Did they burn? Yep. Oh no, I came and they burned. <laughs> Since my dad was over here, I went ahead and I packaged him up a goodie bag because he just dropped me off a bunch of really good goodies. He deserved a bunch of good cookies to take home. I wish I had had all the candies done at this point so I could package him up all the candies. All right, friends, let's regroup here and let's take a minute to chat. I completely burnt the Palmiers. My dad came over and he dropped off a ton of canning jars. My mom went to Goodwill yesterday and she found about 18 quart jars and about 12 half gallon jars, which I'm so excited to have half gallon jars. You never see them at Goodwill. In the kibushal and hustle of that, my dad brought me coffee as well. I had some yard work that was done that my dad wanted to see the progress on it. So I told him we can't go out there till I take these out of the oven. Well, I took one set out of the oven and I burnt them because they were on my lower oven. I'm not gonna use that lower oven anymore to bake in. I almost burnt those snowball cookies down there. Those were completely salvageable. I had my dad give a couple taste tests and they're perfectly fine. But I burnt some Palmiers and then I took those out and then I forgot that I still had the top ones in the oven. <laughs> so we went outside, we're walking around, we came inside and I was like, oh my gosh, the cookies. Well, there's about 10 that are salvageable on the, the ones that were on the top oven. And I think what I'm gonna do is I'm not out a lot of time with that, which I'm glad because it was store-bought puff pastry, but I still wanna give those as gifts, but I don't wanna make those tonight. I'll probably, I'll put the puff pastry in the refrigerator so it's completely thawed for me and I'll make them tomorrow and I'll have those so that when I package up all these goodies, I will have that in the goodie bag because I think it just adds another layer of dimension and difference between all of what we have so that there's there will be four different cookies. I was gonna make the saltine toffee in this video, but I figured that's kind of more of a candy process. So because we're gonna be doing the almond roca, peanut brittle, now saltine toffee, and peppermint bark, I wanna just go ahead and we'll do that all together. Thank you guys for hanging out with me. I'm gonna end this video here, but I am not done in the kitchen. I'm gonna take a second, clean up a little bit, regroup, drink my coffee, 
and we are going to be right back here and I've got to make all that candy. If you guys enjoyed this video, I will pop up some other cooking videos that will pop up right here so you can go check those out if you're interested. You can find these recipes on scratchpantry.com. I hope you guys are having a great day and I'll see you next time.